hi everybody um uh thank you so much for the invitation um and for putting together such a wonderful group of speakers i think it's um really really wonderful to see such a network come together um especially for international women's day um so for my presentation i'm going to talk a little bit about you know my research interests um and what sort of you know drives me in terms of uh you know the science side um, but then I'll also sort of come back into you know how did I actually get to where I am and what were the major factors and influences that that really got me there um, so uh, I'd also like to acknowledge that I'm, I'm speaking to you uh, on Gadigal land on the the beautiful um, campuses of University of Sydney so um, my uh, data science journey, as, as Rosa mentioned, I'm a, a, an academic um, in the School of Maths and Stats at the University of Sydney. Um, and I'm also a research leader in the Sydney Precision Data Science Centre. Um, so this is a really wonderful group um, uh, that, you know, spans academics from professors all the way to our um, undergraduate sort of um, honours level students. Um, and this picture is actually us at our um, latest uh, uh, early career researcher retreat um, in the Hunter Valley just a few weeks ago. Um, so in terms of my research interests, um, you know, my area of um, expertise is in biomedical data science. And I'm really interested in how we can bring together information from multiple sources uh, for uh, high dimension, high complexity, um, single cell and spatial omics, right? So genomics and transcriptomics. And, you know, one of the main sort of concepts um, in this space is actually how we can integrate multiple pieces of information together. And the way in which we frame this is actually by uh, characterizing different ways of data integration. So, you know, we can think of our sort of data matrices um, in terms of features by observations. Um, and often with the different types of technologies that we that we use, um, it may be that we're capturing multiple sets of features for the same number of observations or the other way around, right? And so it's helpful for us to actually characterize these ideas in terms of horizontal and vertical integration. So, you know, what we imagine is we've got uh, many, many different sets of cells or samples, and we've measured the same sets of features uh, working horizontal, or we have many, many different features that are measured on those same sets of uh, observations. So this is all wonderful and great, but with the sort of increase in complexity of the different types of technologies that we're uh, able to extract from single cell and spatial omics, we're actually entering a world where we have multiple sets of data being captured in multiple combinations. And this is, you know, aptly named uh, mosaic data integration. Um, and so, you know, in terms of time, I only have enough time to really give you like a bit of a taster and, and a little bit of uh, yeah, hopefully interest to, to look at this a little bit further. But, um, you know, part of my work is to develop, you know, ways in which we can uh, extract all of the information from all of these different data sets by being able to leverage them across each other. And, you know, I work a lot in R, I develop R packages. And for this work, we've actually developed an R package called StabMap to be able to for, perform integration of multiple single cells together. Um, okay, so that's just a few minutes about my research interests. But, you know, um, how did I actually get here and how did I get interested in working in this? Um, so, you know, my, uh, my background really is that I went to a public girls high school in Western Sydney. 
Um, you know, when I was in high school, I really liked English. I liked history. I liked science. I liked maths. I liked all, a lot of things, actually. Um, and it was in year 11, actually, that I was encouraged by my year 10 maths teacher to actually take up extension one maths. And it's funny to think about it now, you know, after an undergraduate degree and a PhD, that I, I actually wasn't sure if I was good enough. And I really, I do see that sometimes in, in girls nowadays. And I try to sort of share my story that, you know, even I felt that at that time. Um, and it was actually based on a push from my high school teacher that made me take up extension one maths. Um, I ended up loving it. And then I took more units in high school. And then I took even more units um, in, in university. So, you know, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do as a career, um, but I knew that I liked science and I really loved the maths units that I took. And so I enrolled in a Bachelor of Science Advanced Maths. Um, so uh, it was actually in semester two of my first year that I took a statistics unit for the first time. Um, and I really like to, uh, you know, flag Dr. Joanna Wang, who was my tutor in first year. And it was her love of statistics and her generosity in teaching that really sparked an interest in me. And that really shaped my whole career. I took on more and more statistics units. I learned more about data science and that's really sort of set me on a path. Um, so, you know, I did an undergraduate in um, Bachelor of Science. I had a major in statistics, uh, particularly applied statistics. Um, and then uh, I really loved that the way that, you know, the precision of mathematics um, sort of intersected with like the realness of, of the randomness that we see in the world. So, you know, the, the act of discovery as well in something that is, uh, you know, potentially like an opaque uh, piece of data um, really is what, what excites me and what drives me. So I studied my honours and my PhD in statistical bioinformatics, um, and that was really motivated by this explosion of complex high dimensional data in the biological sphere. Um, and I'm incredibly grateful to Professor Jean Yang for her supervision and her guidance and really her mentorship throughout um, ever since. So, you know, I finished, I finished my PhD and then I was, you know, going on to my journey into biomedical data science. So after finishing my PhD, I traveled to Cambridge in the United Kingdom to train as a postdoctoral research associate. And so it was there that I worked at the Cancer Research UK, Cambridge Institute, and I was at the EMBL European Bioinformatics Institute. And so while I was sort of embedded in this sort of computational biology kind of sphere, I really found that my foundation in statistics and in data science was uh, really a strength to try to help understand, you know, all of the complex different types bits of data that were coming my way, um, you know, whether it came from these new technologies of single cell RNA sequencing or of spatial omics imaging. Um, and, you know, what I'm showing here is just a cartoon of, you know, the different types of cells that we can capture. Um, and, and this is just a little bit of a, a taster of, of the kind of um, exploration kind of um, visualization that I, I work with. Um, so I, I completed my postdoctoral fellowship um, and following on from that, I made my way back to the University of Sydney um, as a lecturer and as an ARC DECRA fellow. Um, and uh, now I lead a team of researchers and students um, who they themselves are creating, you know, new ways, new algorithms, new statistics to create ways in which we can solve you know big data problems and work with biologists to be able to come up with you know data science solutions um, in this sphere and so in the last uh just 30 seconds or so really you know what advice would i give to to my younger self um and and maybe to anyone around me um you know keep your options open i think uh being uh sort of thinking about oh you know i need to get this career and that career and so on um really uh it's it's really worthwhile to keep your options open um so you know 
getting exposure to those statistics units really has shaped my shaped my career. Um, don't fall for stereotypes. So I was very, you know, thinking that, uh, you know, like that, you know, mathematics and these sort of STEM approaches um, really are sort of more for, for, for boys and for men. Um, and that's completely changed um, in, in the last sort of 10, 15 years of my career. Um, I like to, you know, think that everybody has something to teach and everybody has something to learn. So whether you're a student, whether you're a professor, whether you're, you know, any, anything, there's always something to teach and something to learn. And finally, I'd say, you know, challenge yourself. Um, you can rise to the occasion. Um, and so really, really push yourself, go the extra mile, why, why not? Um, and with that, I'd like to thank you um, and plug uh, our, our group again once more. Thanks very much.